And with that, I'm going to ask the choir to come on up. And thank you for joining in on those. And we will have a word of prayer. And, uh, and then we're going to begin. The, the title of the cantata that we're going to sing is Welcome Jesus. And I just want to glorify and give thanks tonight for God sending his son into this world that we might have the Savior. And let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, just want to thank you that we can join together tonight. And Lord, to honor you. And, and again, just give thanks for the wonderful gift, the most wonderful gift, the perfect gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, the only hope we have. I just thank you, Father, for uh, sending your son into this world and, and uh, being willing to sacrifice him uh, for the sins of the world that we might be saved. I pray, Father, that you just bless and be honored tonight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we celebrate the birth of Christ, let us remember that he was God before he ever became man. He is from everlasting. Psalm 90. Genesis 49.10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall be the gathering of the people be. Micah 5.2, but thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. people in the world, many religions, many martyrs, and saviors. Yet how do we tell the one in whom we are to trust, the one who is to pay sin's price? Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Matthew 1 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. 
Matthew 1, 19 through 23. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she'll bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Matthew 1, 24 and 25. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. And he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus.
You have B.C. and A.D. Before they looked forward for hope to one day come, we look back at Christ and celebrate for he has come. Galatians 4, 4 and 5 says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Everything changed that night. Luke 2, 4, and 5. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Luke 2, 6, and 7. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. time had finally come. The prophecies were about to be fulfilled. Heaven and earth had been waiting for thousands of years. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 10 and 11 say, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Luke 2, 8 and 9. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 14. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men.
Thank you, choir. Amen. You can go ahead and rest your legs a little bit. That's a little wild to stand. And, but I want to read a passage of scripture as we look at this tonight. As we were going through the cantata, each, each time we would go through and practice it and uh, just get to those, that last song. You know, it's hard for me when I read that last song, the words of it, to sing joyfully, uh, to picture uh, you know, usually when you give a gift at Christmas, you're excited to give a gift. You can't wait for the person to open that gift. But we have to picture ourselves in God the Father's hand. He's giving his son. Now, that's quite a gift to give. Uh, to be able to think that God would rejoice when he's sending his son, Jesus Christ, again by the command of his father. He came into this world he, he set aside his divine attributes. He became a man like us, a human. Uh, to picture a holy God leaving a holy heaven to come into a wicked world, knowing the plan for his life was to go to a cross and to die in our place. You know, that's God's amazing gift. There's never been a gift given that required such a sacrifice. We could never give a gift with such a high price. Uh, as God gave his son. And yet the Bible says the angels, when they came to the shepherds, they did rejoice, didn't they? And so God still, his great love for us, he rejoiced that he sent his son uh, for you and I. And it's just hard to imagine a price as a dad uh, of giving my child for someone else and yet being able to rejoice in it. Uh, and then the end of the song, it talks about Christ going to the cross. And again, rejoicing in heaven. As we think of Jesus Christ taking the sins of you and I, not his own, but the sins of you and I. You know, they hung him on that cross in the middle of two wicked thieves he went to that cross in the place of a murderer and he hung in that spot, the center position, which was the place reserved for the worst criminal when being put punished under Roman law. They mocked him. They beat him. They spit upon him. They plucked his beard out. Uh, Bob, what would that be like to have your beard plucked out? You know, it would come out with flesh. Think of the cat of nine tails that they whipped him with. The Bible says all those things and his father looked on while those things took place. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The picture, God the Father rejoicing and the angels rejoicing because that time had come for sin's price to be paid. Only a great love could cause, a love we can't even understand, could cause a father to rejoice when that is happening to his son. Uh, we can't even, how do you measure that kind of love? When we think of Christmas and we think what we celebrate, I'm thankful that Jesus Christ came. But just to picture the price for that wonderful gift of eternal life that God gave for us. And so I just want to read a passage for, uh, as we, uh, to think about as we go through the Christmas time and we enjoy Christmas with our family and as uh, we can uh, rejoice in this life if you have the hope of Christ because uh, you know that you'll be in heaven and and just give thanks for God's Son. And so Isaiah chapter 53, and if you have your Bible, you can uh, turn with me and read, but Isaiah 53, it just talks about the Father's joy in the Son's sacrifice. 
God expressed two different occasions in the Bible or in, in the New Testament. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. There is no doubt of God's great love for his son. And yet it does say in the scriptures it pleased him, the sacrifice of his son. For that joy that was set before him. Isaiah 53 Verse 1, the Bible says, Who hath believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he, speaking of Jesus, shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. When we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Speaking of, of Jesus, the way people treated him as he's upon this earth. He is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. The Bible says the creator of the heavens and the earth, he came into this world and this world knew him not. Verse 4, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. I mean, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us stand guilty before God. But his son not only was innocent, he was perfect without sin. The Bible says that he that was without sin became sin for us, that we might have the righteousness of God. So he says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. When he went to that cross, he paid the price for the sins of the whole world. Verse 7, he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Not only did the father send the son, but Jesus said, I lay down my life. Uh, he volunteered for the task for you and I. Verse 8, he was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he, speaking of Jesus, made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Verse 10. So we come down to verse number 10. If you look at verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. That's how much God loves you and I. That's God's gift to man. His son, Jesus Christ. What a great sacrifice. And yet God is pleased to give you that gift. Uh, God loves you so much. He wants you uh, in heaven with him. Can you imagine turning down such a gift that was paid with such a price? And yet all over this world, people reject Christ. All over this world, people, in fact, many religion teaches, oh, you can pay the price yourself. Uh, you can overcome your evils. You can become good enough. You can keep the Ten Commandments. You can be baptized into a church. You can, I mean, 
All these things, man in their pride, they think, I can pay the price for my sins. I can be good enough to get to heaven. The Bible says, no man ascendeth up to heaven, but the Son of Man which came down from heaven. Jesus Christ is the only one that fulfilled the law, lived a perfect life, and he did it for you and I. Everyone must come to a point and place in their life that they recognize Christ died for them. And they personally must accept Christ as their Savior. Uh, there are wicked people in this world, aren't there? And you're looking at one of them. If you were to amass all the sins of my life, 58 years old, can you just picture how big the book already is of the times that I've broken God's laws, that I've, uh, through thought, through word, through action. It's easy to look at others and see people outwardly wicked and, and yet hide our inward wickedness, but it's until we come to that point in place that recognize that we're lost without Christ we are condemned to hell. But God's great gift, wouldn't you receive that gift that God gave? Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus came not just for me and not just for everybody else, but he came for you. Can you honestly say before God, because God's the one that knows your heart, be able to say before God, I, I know there's a time in my life I knew I was lost and I received Christ as my Savior. I prayed and called upon him and asked me to save me. And uh, if, you, if you can't remember such a time, uh, why not remember tonight? Uh, why not right now? Say, God, I receive that gift. Uh, I need your son, Jesus Christ. I am thankful that he came and he died for me. I'm the sinner that needs to be saved. Would you save me? You know, the Bible says, whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's with heads bowed and eyes closed tonight. And I just want to give you an opportunity. If you've, if you've not, if you'd say, I'm not sure, I'd want to be sure. Uh, to receive the wonderful gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So if you've not trusted Christ as your Savior, I'd love to be able to pray for you tonight. Uh, heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. But is there someone tonight, you say, Pastor, would you pray for me? Uh, I need to receive the gift of Jesus Christ. Is there someone tonight, just by an uplifted hand, I need Jesus Christ as my Savior. You win it all. Thank you, amen. Thank you for that hand. I see that. Any others? I need to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. Well, if you say, I'm just not yet sure that I need to raise my hand. And, uh, uh, you know, we don't want to rush the Holy Spirit, but if God's working upon your heart, I pray that before the night ends, you would call upon Jesus Christ and make him your Savior. Miss Angelina, would you have her with you? Amen. Anyone else? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for Christmas. Thank you, Lord, that we can celebrate. And uh, Lord, we should remember the, the, the great gift, the wonderful gift, the, the amazing sacrifice that you made for us every day, not just December 25th. Uh, Lord, I, uh, I just think of the time tonight to be able to come together in the songs and Lord, just our hearts, just the, the, the event of showing up and desiring to worship you tonight and just give thanks for your son, Jesus Christ. I pray that, uh, Lord, there be Christians all over the world uh, that uh, would be lifting you up and bringing glory to your son, Jesus Christ. Again, I just ask, Lord, if there's someone else tonight that is not sure of their salvation, uh, Father, for whatever reason, they didn't raise their hand, but I... I just pray, Lord, that uh, you would just convict them and burden them to uh, receive uh, the gift of your son. Lord, again, I just pray for the one that raised her hand. And Lord, as she uh, deals with assurance in her salvation, I, I just ask, Lord, that you would 
uh, just uh, again use your word and bless through your word that uh, she would fully understand and know that she has you as her Savior. Again, just want to thank you, Lord, that we could gather tonight. I pray you bless the food, the, uh, the uh, fellowship, and uh, Lord, just the friendship as we gather tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.